According to Reuters, as Roma manager Jose Mourinho said some of his players had adopted a superficial approach in Thursday's Europa League game against Servette in Geneva after the hosts fought back in the second half for a 1-1 draw. Mourinho's side took the lead in the first half through Romelu Lukaku but Servette pegged them back shortly after halftime through Chris Badia. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average edged lower on Friday, keeping it on course to post its first weekly drop after four straight weeks of gains, as tech shares slumped amid a rise in bond yields. The Nikkei ended the morning session down 0.08% at 33,461.71 setting it up for a 0.48% slide this week. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan racked up the most unrealized losses on its bond holdings on record in the latest six-month period, illustrating the challenge facing Governor Kazuo Ueda if he moves toward normalizing policy. The paper loss on those assets was 10.5 trillion yen at the end of September, the largest loss in data going back to fiscal 2004, according to the central bank's semi-annual financial statement Tuesday. It's more than 60 times bigger than the 157 billion yen loss tallied for last fiscal year. According to Bloomberg, copper advanced to the highest level in 11 weeks on concerns over the looming shutdown of a large mine in Panama and amid expectations of a widening ore supply deficit in 2024. The Panama government has said it will shut first Quantum Minerals Limited's COBRA operation which produces about 1.5% of the world's supply. The mine already suspended output last month as a blockade of boats restricted key supplies amid mass protests from environmentalists and labor unions. According to Reuters, a total of 121 people, mostly Malaysians suspected of being victims of job scams, were evacuated from Myanmar on Friday after being stranded by fighting between the military and rebel groups in the country's north, Malaysia's foreign ministry said. The group, which included an Indonesian national, arrived at Kuala Lumpur International Airport at 3.24 a.m. local time through a specially arranged flight from Kunming, China, the ministry said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, economists raised their full-year projections for India's economy sharply after data on Thursday showed growth outperformed last quarter, fueled by a manufacturing boom. Barclays PLC and Citigroup Inc. predict the economy will now expand 6.7% in the fiscal year ending in March, up from previous forecasts of 6.3% and 6.2%, respectively. Several other analysts also bumped up their estimates. According to Reuters, China's finance ministry recently surveyed financial institutions about a sovereign bond issuance plan for next year, two people with direct knowledge of the matter said on Friday. China's bond issuance plans have attracted growing market attention after the government lifted its fiscal deficit for 2023 in October to free up more funds to kickstart the sputtering economy. According to Bloomberg, New Zealand's central bank can't afford to ignore a surge in immigration, even though it's expected to subside next year, because inflation has been above target for so long, Deputy Governor Christian Hawksby said. When you're in an environment where inflation's at target and inflation expectations are really well anchored, you've got the luxury to look through things and bide your time, Hawksby said in an interview Friday in Wellington. When inflation's above target, has been above target for a prolonged period and core inflation pressures are slow in terms of coming back to target, you don't have that luxury. According to Bloomberg, shares in Asia were poised for a mixed opening after Wall Street saw a late-day rebound in trading helping the SP500 notch one of its biggest November rallies on record. Recent gains in treasuries stalled. Equity futures for Japan and Hong Kong were slightly higher while those for Australia declined. The SP500 climbed 0.4% Thursday, capping one of its best November returns in the past century, and closing within 5% of its 2022 peak. The Nasdaq 100 fell 0.3%. According to Bloomberg, President Xi Jinping's government has vowed all year to restore foreign investors' shattered confidence in China. Since a meeting with U.S. leader Joe Biden steadied ties, Beijing is gradually putting his words into action. China has unleashed a flurry of market access concessions in the wake of last month's Lida's summit. Beijing approved a long-delayed MasterCard Inc. joint venture, then followed up by green lighting one of the world's largest technology mergers between U.S. chipmaker Broadcom Inc. and cloud company VMware Inc. Last week, 
Officials announced visa-free access to China for six countries. According to Reuters, core consumer inflation in Japan's capital Tokyo likely grew in November but at slower pace than the month before, a Reuters poll of economists showed on Friday, in a sign that price pressures may be easing. The core consumer price index in Tokyo, a leading indicator of nationwide inflation trends, was expected to have climbed 2.4% in November from a year earlier, according to the median estimate of 16 economists, mainly thanks to falling fuel prices and slower food price increases. That would follow a 2.7% increase in October. According to Bloomberg, the muck from incessant rain sloshes around Nestor Engesson's feet as he points to a plot of cocoa trees ravaged by rot on his farm in Ivory Coast. The 52-year-old grower can't save those plants from black pod disease, so he's focusing efforts on quarantining whatever healthy ones he has left. The soakings of recent months mean fewer pods on his trees, with some supporting just a handful of cocoa buds. According to Bloomberg, oil fell a second day after plunging following Thursday's OPEC Plus meeting that promised further output cuts but was hazy on the details. West Texas Intermediate dropped below $76 a barrel, after sliding 2.4% on Thursday. The alliance announced roughly 900,000 barrels a day of additional oil output cuts from January, but the curbs are largely voluntary, and Angola has already rejected them. Saudi Arabia will prolong its separate 1 million barrel a day curb through the first quarter. According to Reuters, a stellar rally in equities and bonds suggests market confidence is high for the world economy to reach a soft landing after a run of aggressive interest rate hikes. Yet labor markets are softening, the eurozone faces recession and China's property sector is in crisis. According to Reuters, Asian shares edged lower starting the last month of the year on a weak note after recent rally, although anticipated interest rate cuts in Europe and the United States should help ease pressure on local currencies and central banks. Mischi's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan fell 0.4% after a surge of 7.3% last month, the most since January. Japan's Nikkei was flat, having also jumped 8.5% in November in the best month in three years. According to Bloomberg, a group of offshore creditors to China Evergrande Group is demanding controlling equity stakes of the property developer as well as its two Hong Kong subsidiaries as part of discussions on the firm's revamped restructuring proposal, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Their offer is the latest twist before a court hearing on Monday, when the distressed developer faces the risk of a liquidation order unless it submits a convincing restructuring plan. Creditors are requesting their debt be swapped for controlling stakes, the people said after Evergrande proposed offering 17.8% of the parent and 30% of each of the subsidiaries, Evergrande Property Services Group and China Evergrande New Energy Vehicle Group. According to Bloomberg, Japanese life insurers have cut currency hedging by the most in more than a decade, signaling receding concern of a rebound in the yen that would wipe out returns from overseas assets. Derivatives including forwards, swaps and put options protected 47.8% of foreign securities held by life insurers at the end of September, down from 52.7% six months ago. The drop of nearly 5 percentage points in this hedge ratio is the biggest since at least 2011, based on earnings reports from nine of the nation's largest life insurers compiled by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, China's new home prices rose slightly for a third straight month in November. A private survey showed on Friday, as the crisis-hit property sector struggles to stabilize despite a slew of government support measures. Prices rose 0.05% on average from the previous month after gains of 0.07% and 0.05%, according to the survey by real estate research firm China Index Academy. According to Reuters, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will pledge £1.6 billion in funding at the UN Climate Summit on Friday an attempt to bolster his green credentials after watering down Britain's measures to reach net-zero targets. Sunak, in Dubai for COP28 Leaders' Day, will try to restore Britain's reputation as a leader in tackling climate change by committing to spend the mostly new money on projects in Africa and Asia to tackle deforestation and energy innovation. According to Reuters, a global aluminium producer has offered Japanese buyers a premium of $95 per metric ton for January to March primary metal shipments, down 2% from the current quarter, 
three sources directly involved in quarterly pricing talks said. Japan is Asia's biggest importer of the metal and the premiums for primary metal shipments it agrees to pay each quarter over the London Metal Exchange cash price set the benchmark for the region. According to Reuters, even allowing for China's messy cyclical ebb and flow and global political tensions of the day, the exit of long-term foreign capital from the world's second biggest economy is startling. China's spluttering post-COVID recovery this year and the depth of its unfolding property bust has reasonably seen a dramatic underperformance of Chinese markets, compounded by geopolitical posturing that's sowing long-term doubts about both domestic regulation and the country's strategic orientation. According to Reuters, the Reserve Bank of Australia will keep its key interest rate unchanged at 4.35% on Tuesday and a rate cut is now not expected to happen until the fourth quarter of next year due to a strong housing market, according to a Reuters poll. Even with rates at a 12-year high, Australian home prices have recovered all of their 2022 losses since finding a floor in January. They are expected to rise 8% this year and another 5% next year, a separate Reuters poll showed. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin's chances of hitting $40,000 are top of mind for crypto speculators as they head into the final stretch of a year during which the largest digital asset more than doubled in price. The token has rebounded about 130% over the past 11 months from 2022's crypto route, outstripping investments like stocks or gold. Hopes for Federal Reserve interest rate cuts next year, and expectations that the U.S. will allow its first spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, together created a potent elixir. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks paired losses following a report that an unidentified state institution bought exchange-traded funds, in what could be the latest effort to bolster markets as shares continue to slump. The CSI 300 index was down 0.3% as of 2.40 p.m. local time, having earlier fallen as much as 1.3%. The Shanghai Composite Index erased losses to edge higher. According to Bloomberg, India's record-breaking rally in small-cap stocks is nearing an important hurdle that could set off an even further bullish move in the coming year, should it give way. The Nifty Small Cap 100 Index has rallied 47% so far this year and is headed for a formidable upside barrier, represented by the upper end of a long-term rising channel which has its origin at the 2009 low. The boundary currently rests around 4% above the November close. According to Bloomberg, Sign up for the Green Daily Newsletter for comprehensive coverage of the climate summit right in your inbox. World leaders have arrived in Dubai for United Nations climate talks with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Brazil President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva among those due to address the summit. According to Reuters, mutual funds that hold bonds are selling like hot cakes in China as investors bet the central bank will cut interest rates further to aid the struggling economy. More than 50 bond-focused mutual funds were launched in November, raising 105 billion yuan in total, the biggest monthly fundraising this year, according to data from fund consultancy Zben Advisors. According to Reuters, leaders from across the world are poised to address the UN Climate Conference on Friday, with many expected to speak about the hardship of climate impacts unfolding in their countries. In the day's opening address, Britain's King Charles is expected to warn that repeated signs of climate impact are being ignored, with devastating consequences. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble steadied on Friday, pulling away slightly from the more than one-week low hit in the previous session, with support from capital controls, high oil prices and expectations of another interest rate increase this month. At 0744, G, M, T, the ruble was unchanged against the dollar at 89.44, having dropped to 89.6125 in the previous session, its weakest point since November 20. According to Reuters, festive cheer has come early to world markets on growing certainty that central banks will start slashing interest rates next year. For sure, key US jobs data will test the exuberance, while Australia's central bank could reinforce a view that rates have peaked. According to Bloomberg, Sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. India is set to restart imports of Venezuelan oil after a three-year hiatus, 
according to brokers and shipping fixtures, as it rushes to take advantage of a U.S. move to ease sanctions on the South American nation. According to Reuters, more banks will need to report and then reduce the carbon emissions linked to their capital markets deals, after an industry-led standard setter for carbon accounting launched its long-awaited methodology on Friday. Credible and widely adopted carbon accounting standards are considered vital for improving the transparency and accountability of the role corporations play in generating emissions. According to Bloomberg, Sense Time Group Inc. is exploring carving out its autonomous driving and healthcare units for separate fundraising, people familiar with the matter said, as the Chinese AI company looks to expand these businesses. The Hong Kong-listed firm has approached potential investors for the funding plans, said the people, who asked not to be identified as the information is private. Sense Time is looking to sell partial stakes in the units to other companies in the industry, followed by financial investors at a later stage, one of the people said. According to Bloomberg, HPS Investment Partners, the private credit firm carved out of J.P. Morgan Chase Company in 2016, confidentially filed for an initial public offering, according to people with knowledge of the matter. The firm submitted its registration to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission more than a year ago, said one of the people, who asked not to be identified discussing information that isn't public. As a result of that filing, HPS is positioned to pursue a listing if equity capital markets become more favorable, said another of the people. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve's top bank watchdog wants lenders to be more comfortable turning to the central bank's discount window. Michael Barr, the Fed's vice chair for supervision, touted the backstop as an important tool for financial stability and monetary policy. In prepared remarks for a European Central Bank event on Friday, he said the lenders should use the window in good times and bad. According to Reuters, Britain's King Charles said on Friday the world was dreadfully far off track on addressing climate change and that the global economy would be in peril unless the environment was rapidly repaired. In an opening address to the COP28 UN Climate Summit, King Charles told world leaders the dangers of climate change were no longer a distant risk and urged them to take more action. According to Bloomberg, Argentina won't join the China-led emerging market bloc BRICS under the presidency of Javier Malay, his incoming top diplomat said, a sign of significant foreign policy realignment by the new administration that takes office on December 10. We won't go into the BRICS, Diana Mondino, Malay's pick for foreign affairs minister, wrote on the platform X Thursday. Speaking to journalists at an event earlier in Buenos Aires, Mondino also cast doubts about the value of the group, which includes China and Brazil, Argentina's top two commercial partners. According to Bloomberg, officials and investors are starting to worry that the world is sliding toward a new era of great power conflict, as the number of flashpoints multiplies from West Africa through Ukraine to the Middle East. With countries scrambling to protect their interests and frozen conflicts again running hot, for some, the web of overlapping conflagrations carries echoes of the period before World War I when the pacts linking major opposing blocs dragged Europe into a continental war. According to Bloomberg, European stocks kicked off December with gains, extending a rally that added $1.2 trillion to the stock's 600s market value last month, ahead of remarks from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. The benchmark index rose 0.5% by 8.13 a.m. in London, with miners climbing the most. LVMH shares fell as much as 1.9% after the luxury goods maker was downgraded to equal weight from overweight at Morgan Stanley, given the likelihood of a further deterioration in demand for the industry in the fourth quarter. According to Reuters, a request by the World Health Organization for more information on a surge in respiratory illnesses in clusters of pneumonia in children in China has attracted global attention. Health authorities have not detected any unusual or novel pathogens, the WHO later said, and doctors and public health researchers say there is no evidence for international alarm. According to Reuters, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres told world leaders on Friday that the burning of fossil fuels must be stopped outright and a reduction or abatement in their use would not be enough to stop global warming. We cannot save a burning planet with a fire hose of fossil fuels, Guterres said in a speech to the COP28 summit in Dubai. According to Bloomberg, the Philippines is planning to import tons of onions to prevent another, absurd increase in prices, 
which soared earlier this year on tight supply and made the kitchen staple briefly costlier than chicken and beef. Import licenses will be issued to private firms to bring in 21,000 tons of onions before the end of the year, according to a statement from the Bureau of Plant Industry on Friday. The measure is to guarantee ample supply amid an expected increase in demand over the holiday period, the department said. According to Reuters, the Ethereum blockchain's historical greenhouse gas emissions before a major software upgrade last year were equivalent to the yearly emissions of Honduras, a University of Cambridge study showed on Friday. Blockchains, the digital ledgers that underpin cryptocurrencies, typically consume large amounts of energy as they produce coins and process transactions, drawing criticism from environmentalists and some investors. According to Reuters, World leaders from nearly 200 countries were due to address the UN Climate Summit underway in Dubai, where their country's delegations are assessing their progress toward meeting global climate goals. Here are the latest comments. According to Reuters, Spanish billionaire and Zara founder Amancio Ortega has bought a logistics center mainly used by Amazon in Dublin, Ireland, for €225 million, Euros, his investment firm Pontigadea said on Friday. It is the first time Ortega's firm has invested in logistics real estate in Ireland, Pontigadea said. In March, it bought a luxury residential building in Dublin with 120 apartments for rent for around 100 million euros. According to Bloomberg, sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. India increased oil imports from Russia and Iraq last month as refiners maximized purchases of cheaper barrels to bolster margins and meet product demand, according to Kepler data. According to Reuters, China's state-owned Beijing Capital Group has hired Citigroup to sell its wholly-owned Singapore waste management company Eco in a deal that could fetch $300 million to $400 million, said two sources with knowledge of the matter. Beijing Capital bought the business from private equity firm Navis Capital for 246 million Singapore dollars in 2015, Navis Capital said at the time. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble slid to a more than one week low on Friday as a favorable month end tax period passed, on course to record a weekly decline for the first time in seven weeks after a rally spurred by capital controls, high oil prices, and interest rates. By 0937 GMT, the ruble was 0.5% weaker against the dollar at 89.90, its weakest point since November 20. According to Bloomberg, a year after President Emmanuel Macron received a warning that France's credit status faced closer scrutiny, the possibility of a humbling downgrade is looming ever larger. With debt stuck around 110% of gross domestic product, the criteria SP Global Ratings specified to keep its awe assessment are being tested. It has scheduled an update on Friday, almost exactly 12 months after announcing a negative outlook. According to Reuters, a United Nations-led effort to use space satellites to detect methane leaks from fossil fuel infrastructure has alerted governments to 127 major methane plumes across four continents since its launch at the start of this year. Methane is a potent greenhouse gas, with 80 times the warming power of carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. Such emissions from the burning of fossil fuels so far have driven about a third of global warming. According to Reuters, a group of infrastructure investors around Europe are working on the sale of their stakes in European airports, leveraging on the recovery of travel in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, according to bankers, investors and industry sources. Among the largest of the airports that may see a change of ownership as soon as 2024 is Edinburgh, five of the sources said. According to Reuters, Japan's Toyota Motor is partially suspending production at its plant in Tianjin, China, the GG News Service reported on Friday, as global automakers face strong sales competition in the world's top auto market. The suspension is part of a major production adjustment in response to weak sales of gasoline engine cars, GG said. According to Reuters, Eurozone bond prices rose on Friday after their best month in more than a year as investors waited to hear whether Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell would push back against the sharp fall in yields. Germany's 10-year bond yield was last three basis points lower at 2.415%, pairing some of Thursday's six bits per second increase. The yield, which moves inversely to the price, 
fell by 36 bits per second in November in its biggest monthly drop since July 2022, reflecting a dramatic rally in prices. According to Reuters, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres urged world leaders at the COP28 climate summit to plan for a future without fossil fuels, saying there was no other way to rein in global warming. Speaking a day after COP28 President Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber proposed embracing fossil fuels into the future, Guterres said, We cannot save a burning planet with a fire hose of fossil fuels. According to Reuters, Russia is working on the assumption that sanctions against it by the United States and its allies will last for many years, but that U.S. influence on the world economy is waning, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said on Friday. According to Reuters, at Nasser Hospital in southern Gaza, a man cradling a boy with a bloodied scalp cried for help. A girl who had arrived in an ambulance with an unconscious man missing the top of his left foot sobbed as a medic examined her eye. According to Reuters, Japan's Nomura Holdings on Friday said it has appointed former UK Treasury official Tom Scholar as non-executive chair of its European division. Scholar will succeed David Godfrey as chair of Nomura Holdings PLC, Nomura International PLC and Nomura Bank International PLC from April 10, 2024, the company said in a statement. According to Reuters, global stocks edged up on Friday having closed out their best month in three years the day before, as investor confidence that interest rates will fall next year has lured cash into equities, cryptocurrencies and gold at the expense of the dollar. The MSCI All World Index eased 0.1%, mostly on the back of declines in Asian stocks. According to Bloomberg, after two years of delays and production snags, Tesla Inc. has finally handed the first Blade Runner-esque Cybertrucks over to customers. Chief Executive Officer Elon Musk delivered a handful of vehicles to their new owners Thursday, including Reddit co-founder Alexis Ahanian. The handovers at Tesla's Austin headquarters were part of a live-streamed launch event on X, the social media platform Musk owns. According to Bloomberg, South Africa's National Treasury agreed to provide a 47 billion rand support package to Transnet Society Limited backing efforts by the nation's beleaguered rail and ports operator to improve its finances and performance. The company will be able to access 22.8 billion rand immediately under a guarantee facility, the Treasury said in a statement on Friday. Transnet will have to meet strict guarantee conditions for the rest of the funds, according to the statement. According to Bloomberg, President Vladimir Putin has ordered the transfer of all the rights to managing St. Petersburg's Polkovo Airport from foreign shareholders that include Germany's Freeport AG and the Qatari Wealth Fund by shifting their stakes into a new Russian entity. Under a decree published late on Thursday, stakes in the Cyprus registered concession that runs the airport of the second largest Russian city will be consolidated in a new domestic company. Existing investors, which also include a consortium with Abu Dhabi sovereign fund Mubadala Investment Company, will retain their stakes but won't be able to vote. According to Reuters, the World Bank on Friday said it will increase the amount it spends annually on climate-related projects to 45% of its financing over 2024 to 2025, up from 35% now, as part of a policy overhaul to better respond to climate change. The Washington-based Development Bank, whose new president Ajay Banga is leading reforms, said it will spend $40 billion, $9 billion more than was previously programmed. According to Bloomberg, a Bank of America Corp. strategist who correctly predicted this year's rebound in the widely followed 60-40th's portfolio strategy has warned that the trade could now be set for a sharp reversal. The strategy that involves placing 60% of a portfolio in stocks and 40% in bonds had its best month in November since a rally that followed the breakup of the Soviet Union more than 30 years ago, according to B of A. An analysis of historical data conducted by the strategist Michael Hartnett and his team shows that typically, pullbacks follow monster months. According to Reuters, Futures tracking Wall Street's indexes were largely subdued on Friday as investors were on edge in the run-up to Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments that are expected to hold clues on the interest rate path. This come after the SP500 and Nasdaq finished November with their biggest monthly gains since July 2022, while the Dow Jones rallied to close at its highest level since January 2022. According to Reuters, 
Some leading U.S. obesity specialists say they expect Eli Lilly's powerful weight loss drug Zepbound will produce the same or similar heart benefits as Novo Nordisk's popular Wegovy as they belong to the same class of medicines. The views of the five doctors, all senior physicians practicing obesity medicine at top universities and hospitals, indicate that Novo's drug is not likely to have a significant edge based on its heart benefits, even though it will be years before Lilly produces similar cardiovascular data. Both medicines are GLP-1 agonists, a class originally designed to treat type 2 diabetes. According to Reuters, the global monetary tightening cycle was in its last throes in November, with major developed central banks delivering just one increase and the number of cuts outstripping hikes for the first time in 33 months across emerging markets. November saw six of the central banks overseeing the 10 most heavily traded currencies hold rate-setting meetings, with only the Reserve Bank of Australia hiking rates by 25 bits per second. According to Reuters, Israel could secure the freedom of hostages still held by Hamas in the Gaza Strip through talks or by other means, an Israeli official told Reuters on Friday. Speaking in Dubai after fighting resumed in Gaza following the end of a week-long temporary ceasefire, Foreign Ministry Deputy Director General Oded Joseph said Israel remained intent on securing the release of all hostages and destroying Hamas. According to Reuters, Brazil is expected to join the OPEC Plus group of oil producing countries in January but would not take part in the group's coordinated output caps, the chief executive of state run oil firm Petrobras told Reuters. The group's surprising announcement on Thursday that the South American nation would join it raised immediate questions on whether Brazil would take part in the production caps, as OPEC plus nations agreed to voluntary cuts approaching 2 million barrels per day for early next year. According to Reuters, the Biden administration has informed Israel that Washington will impose visa bans in the next few weeks on Israeli extremist settlers engaged in violence against Palestinian civilians in the occupied West Bank, a senior State Department official said. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in his meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet have let them know that the United States will take its own action against an undisclosed number of individuals. According to Reuters, Ethiopia's agreement with its bilateral creditors, other than China, to suspend debt payments until 2025 could be voided if the country does not secure an international monetary fund loan by March 31, 2024, the Paris Club of Developed Creditor Nations said. The debt service standstill for 2023 and 2024 applies to loans agreed before November 10 and will see suspended payments repaid from 2027 to 2029 after a grace period from 2025 to 2026. The Paris Club said in a statement, noting that the deal was reached on November 23. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Reserve's pledge in 2020 to sustain, broad-based and inclusive, employment through loose monetary policy was considered a bold response to the pandemic, putting its muscle behind the idea that low unemployment and low inflation could coexist. The ensuing inflation surge has put that view under a spotlight with scrutiny likely to intensify over the next year as Fed officials prepare for a broad policymaking review that Chair Jerome Powell has said will commence in late 2024. According to Reuters, Israelis interviewed on Tel Aviv's streets backed their army's resumption of fighting in the Gaza Strip on Friday, acknowledging the dangers but blaming Hamas for the collapse of a week-long truce. The pause in a seven-week-old war had allowed for the exchange of hostages held since an October 7 Hamas attack for hundreds of Palestinian prisoners and facilitated the entry of humanitarian aid into the coastal strip. According to Reuters, Bank of Montreal reported a fall in its fourth-quarter profit on Friday, as higher provisions for potential credit defaults offset gains from a rise in its interest income. The lender built up its provisions for credit losses as gloomy economic conditions prompted caution. PCLs at the bank surged to C-446 million dollars, from C-226 million dollars a year earlier. According to Reuters, Switzerland has frozen an estimated 7.7 .7 billion Swiss francs in financial assets belonging to Russians, the government said on Friday, under sanctions designed to punish Moscow for its invasion of Ukraine. The figure, a provisional estimate, represented a slight increase from the 7.5 billion francs the Swiss government said it had blocked last year after the neutral country adopted European Union sanctions. According to Reuters, the Hong Kong Journalists Association said in a statement on Friday it was deeply concerned 
about the safety and whereabouts of a South China Morning Post reporter who has been unreachable since attending an event in Beijing in late October. Minnie Chan, a senior reporter covering security matters at the newspaper, traveled from Hong Kong to Beijing to report on a Chinese defense forum on October 29-31, according to two sources close to her. According to Reuters, electric vehicle maker Fisker said on Friday it will scale down production this month and produce lesser cars this year than its previous guidance to prioritize cash for working capital needs. Shares of the EV maker, which has been struggling with a cash crunch, rose 7% in pre-market. According to Reuters, First Quantum Minerals will suspend its current year production outlook for the Cobra mine in Panama and has initiated international arbitration over a contested contract with the country's government, the miner said on Friday. The lucrative Cobra Panama copper mine has sparked public anger in the country, starting as small, environmental protests that have morphed into bigger demonstrations against the government on charges that the contract was too generous. According to Bloomberg, Bank of Montreal missed analysts' earnings estimates as the company reported higher expenses related to the integration of Bank of the West and a drop in wealth management income. The Toronto-based lender earned C$2.81 per share on an adjusted basis in the fiscal fourth quarter, it said in a statement Friday, falling short of the C$2.85 average estimate of analysts in a Bloomberg survey. Non-interest expenses totaled C$5.7 billion, up from C$4.78 billion a year earlier and missing analysts' forecasts of C$4.95 billion. According to Reuters, EU lawmakers cannot agree on how to regulate systems like ChatGPT, in a threat to landmark legislation aimed at keeping artificial intelligence in check, six sources told Reuters. As negotiators meet on Friday for crucial discussions ahead of final talks scheduled for December 6, foundation models, are generative AI have become the main hurdle in talks over the European Union's proposed AI Act, said the sources, who declined to be identified because the discussions are confidential. According to Bloomberg, Venezuela's economic crisis and raging hyperinflation have rendered credit cards useless, but a new Buy Now, Pay Later app is bringing customers back to the checkout line. Customers in Caracas flocked to Ven Electronics, a large appliance store, last week seeking Black Friday deals. Their purchases were bankrolled by Cashia, which has added more than 1.2 million clients in just over a year thanks to pent-up demand for consumer credit. According to Reuters, Apple and Paramount Global have discussed bundling their streaming services at a discount, the Wall Street Journal reported on Friday. Shares of media company Paramount rose 3% in pre-market trading. According to Reuters, Shares in Worldline surged almost 12% on Friday after a media report said Credit Agricole was considering acquiring a stake in the French payment processing company. The French lender is exploring building a stake in Worldline in an effort to help stabilize its struggling payments partner, Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stocks took a breather on Friday after wrapping up a stellar month, as investors waited for Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell to potentially shed light on whether an interest rate cut lies ahead. Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures hovered above the flatline, losing momentum after reaching a fresh closing high for 2023. Futures on the SP500 and on the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 were down around 0.1% and 0.2%, respectively. According to Reuters, U.S.-listed shares of Alibaba Group Holding dipped on Friday following a Morgan Stanley downgrade on concerns over slower turnaround in its key businesses, just hours after rival PDD raced past to become the most valuable Chinese e-commerce firm. Alibaba's U.S. shares slipped 1.5% to $73.70 in pre-market trading, tracking a fresh one-year low. They are down 14% since the company posted in-line second-quarter revenue and scrapped plans to spin off its cloud business. According to Reuters, risky bank bonds that cratered during the implosion of Credit Suisse rallied hard in November, as the market found new energy, climbing around 4% in the best month since January. Invesco's $1.1 billion exchange-traded fund of additional Tier 1 bonds jumped 4.6% last month, while a global ICE B of A index that includes AT1 bonds rose 4.4%. According to Reuters, 
BNY Mellon will increase its minimum wage next year to $22.50 an hour from $20 and expand mental health benefits for employees, the bank said in a statement on Friday. The pay boost takes effect in March and is the company's third in the last three years. According to Reuters, a sharp rally in Mexican shares and optimism around companies moving to the Latin American country to be closer to the U.S. have spurred buying into exchange-traded funds focused on local stocks, with iShares MSCI Mexico ETF posting its strongest month of inflows in seven years. According to Reuters, a group of creditors holding Sri Lanka's international bonds said on Friday it welcomed the country's debt restructuring agreement with official creditors though said a lack of transparency on deals struck so far was regrettable. Sri Lanka and a group of its creditor nations, including Japan, France and India, on Wednesday reached an agreement in principle on a debt rework of $5.9 billion of outstanding public debt. That followed a deal between the country and the Export-Import Bank of China in October on about $4.2 billion of loans. According to Reuters, the EU's drug watchdog will request more data from makers of a class of diabetes and weight loss drugs including Novo Nordisk's popular therapies Ozempic and Wegovy to further investigate suicidal thoughts in some patients taking them. While at this point no conclusion can be drawn on a causal association, there are several issues that still need to be clarified, the European Medicines Agency said in a statement on Friday. According to Reuters, industrial production in Brazil rose less than expected in October. Data from statistics agency IBGE showed on Friday, pointing to a sluggish start to the fourth quarter as the sector continues to show lack of dynamism amid high interest rates. Output was up 0.1% in October from September, IBGE said, below the 0.3% growth estimated in a Reuters poll of economists, and increased 1.2% on a yearly basis, also falling short of expectations of a 1.3% rise. According to Reuters, pot producer Canopy Growth said on Friday it has completed the sale of its sports nutrition products segment BioSteel, as the company seeks to turn profitable. The company said it has received gross proceeds of C$30.4 million for the sale of the U.S. and Canada units of BioSteel. According to Bloomberg, Canada's labor market beat expectations with jobs gains, but a rising unemployment rate and a drop in hours worked signal mounting economic weakness toward the end of this year. The country added 25,000 jobs in November, while the unemployment rate rose 0.1 percentage points to 5.8%, a 22-month high, Statistics Canada reported Friday in Ottawa. The jobs figures topped expectations for a gain of 14,000 positions but matched the expected jobless rate, according to the median estimate in a Bloomberg survey of economists. According to Reuters, the European Medicines Agency's Safety Committee on Friday recommended changes to product information for all medicines that contain the ingredient pseudoephedrine to address safety concerns related to neurological and heart-related side effects. The health regulator started a review of decongestant medicines for cold and flu in February, after reports of conditions affecting blood vessels in the brain in some patients who took pseudoephedrine-containing medicines. According to Reuters, a U.S. auto safety regulator said on Friday it is opening an investigation into 73,000 Chevrolet Volt plug-in hybrid cars over reports of abrupt loss of power, failures to restart and other issues. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said it was opening the preliminary evaluation into the 2016 through 2019 model year Chevrolet Volt after 61 complaints tied to the battery energy control module. Some complaints reported there was little to no warning before the loss of operating power or reduced power mode occurred. According to Reuters, the Biden administration on Friday issued long-awaited guidance that will limit Chinese content in batteries eligible for electric vehicle tax credits starting next year. In a win for automakers, the U.S. Treasury will temporarily exempt some trace-critical minerals from new strict rules barring materials from China and other countries deemed a foreign entity of concern. According to Reuters, Japan will stop building new coal power plants that do not have emission reduction measures in place, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida told the COP28 climate summit in Dubai on Friday. In line with its pathway to net zero, Japan will end new construction of domestic unabated coal power plants, while securing a stable energy supply, Kishida said. According to Reuters, 
Wall Street's indexes were set for a subdued open on Friday as investors were on edge in the run-up to Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments that are expected to hold clues on the interest rate path. This comes after the SP500 and Nasdaq finished November with their biggest monthly gain since July 2022, while the Dow Jones rallied to close at its highest level since January 2022. According to Reuters, banks will need to account for a third of the emissions linked to their capital markets deals when they report their carbon footprint, after an industry-led standard setter launched a long-awaited methodology on Friday. Disagreement between banks over how much of the emissions should be apportioned to them delayed a decision, considered a crucial part of making emissions reporting credible. According to Reuters, Asian spot liquefied natural gas prices fell this week to a seven-week low despite cold weather, as demand remains muted and global supply conditions ease after recent maintenance and geopolitical tensions. The average LNG price for January delivery into Northeast Asia fell 6% to $15.70 per million British thermal units, the lowest since mid-October, industry sources estimated. According to Reuters, U.S. grains trader Cargill on Friday said it completed the acquisition of three soybean crushing and biodiesel production plants in Brazil that were previously owned by Granol, a privately held company. Cargill, which made a binding offer for Granol's assets in August for an undisclosed amount, said it had already gotten Brazilian antitrust approval for the deal. According to Reuters, Shares of crypto miners and Bitcoin tracking companies climbed in pre-market trading on Friday as the world's largest cryptocurrency extended a recent rally to touch a near 19-month high on improving risk appetite. Bitcoin, up 2% at $38,410, has been gaining since October on optimism that a potential approval of a spot exchange traded fund is likely to unleash more capital investments in the digital asset sector. According to Reuters, Vietnam's Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin said on Friday that his country has forged a plan with G7 governments and lenders for how it would use an agreed multi-billion dollar cash injection to reduce its coal use. He announced the launch of the so-called Resource Mobilization Plan, a critical milestone in landing the funds, alongside European Union partners on the sidelines of the COP28 International Climate Summit in Dubai. According to Reuters, Argentine president-elect Javier Malay has picked conservative election campaign rival Patricia Bullrich as his security minister, his office said on Friday, another signal of the outsider libertarian selecting a more moderate first cabinet. Bullrich, who was the candidate for the main conservative opposition bloc, had been an early favorite in the polls to win the presidential election, but failed to reach the runoff between Malay and Peronist economy minister Sergio Massa. According to Bloomberg, Israel and Hamas resumed their war in the Gaza Strip on Friday morning after a week-long truce ended with the two sides failing to agree on the release of more hostages held by the militant group. Israeli jets struck Hamas targets in Gaza soon after the ceasefire finished at 7 a.m. local time. The army also dropped leaflets on southern parts of the enclave, including around the city of Khan Yunus, telling people to evacuate and signaling an expansion of Israel's ground offensive beyond the north. According to Reuters, Tesla shares fell more than 3% on Friday after the highly anticipated launch of its Cybertruck left analysts concerned about the electric vehicle's steep price tag and a longer wait for significant financial payoff. The $60,990 starting price for the long-delayed Cybertruck is more than 50% higher than what CEO Elon Musk had touted in 2019 and Acosta analysts have said will draw select, affluent buyers. According to Reuters, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has a poster hanging on a wall of his office in Tel Aviv, in the wake of the October 7 attack on Israel by Hamas. It shows mugshots of hundreds of the Palestinian militant group's commanders arranged in a pyramid. At the bottom are Hamas junior field commanders. At the top is its high command, including Mohammed Diaf, the shadowy mastermind of last month's assault. According to Reuters, Spanish Finance Minister Nadia Calvino became the lead candidate this week to become the next president of the European Investment Bank, a document showed, a week before EU finance ministers are to decide who should get the prestigious job. The IBE is the lending arm of the European Union, fully owned by the 27 EU governments, and also the world's biggest multilateral financial institution by assets and one of the largest providers of climate finance.
According to Reuters, Ukraine's infrastructure ministry said on Friday it had agreed with Poland on some measures which could help ease the situation at border crossings blocked by Polish truckers but that protesters' main demands have not been on the agenda. According to Bloomberg, while New York City's push to charge motorists $15 to enter Manhattan's congested central business district next year inched forward Thursday with the release of a recommended toll structure, a pending lawsuit by New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy has put that timeline in limbo. The Metropolitan Transportation Authority, which runs New York City's subways, buses and commuter rail lines, wants to start charging the congestion pricing as soon as late spring so it can use the estimated $1 billion a year it would generate to modernize a more than 100-year-old system. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index was subdued in early trading on Friday as losses in technology stocks countered communications gains, while investors assessed the latest batch of economic data and the last of the big bank earnings. At 9.44 a.m. Eastern Time, the Toronto Stock Exchange's SP-TSX Composite Index was up 5.09 points, or 0.03%, at 20,241.38. According to Reuters, the Canadian dollar strengthened to a two-month high against its U.S. counterpart on Friday as domestic data showed the economy adding more jobs than expected last month, contributing to the recent upswing in sentiment toward the currency. Canadian employment rose by 24,900 jobs in November, eclipsing the 15,000 gain that economists had expected, although hours worked fell and the jobless rate ticked up to 5.8%, as growth in the population continued to outpace employment growth. According to Reuters, Brazil's finance ministry and the Inter-American Development Bank will launch a foreign exchange hedge platform aimed at smoothing volatility for investments under the country's green transition plan the Brazilian government said on Friday. Reuters had. According to Reuters, the SP500 and Nasdaq fell on Friday as investors were on edge ahead of Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments that some fear may have a hawkish tilt towards monetary policy. This comes after both the indexes finished November with their biggest monthly gain since July 2022, while the Dow Jones rallied to close at its highest level since January 2022. According to Reuters, some retailers in Venezuela are turning to old-fashioned layaway purchase offers to help customers buy everything from home appliances to shoes and motorcycles, as sky-high inflation and tight credit restrictions cut off other avenues for shopping. Though the government of President Nicolas Maduro relaxed currency controls in 2019, leading to a slight recovery for the crisis-hit country, this year the highest price growth in Latin America, shrinking wages and falling consumption have again battered the economy. According to Reuters, U.S. manufacturing remained subdued in November, according to a survey on Friday that also showed factory employment declining. The Institute for Supply Management said that its manufacturing PMI was unchanged at 46.7 last month. It was the 13th consecutive month that the PMI stayed below 50, which indicates contraction in manufacturing. That is the longest such stretch since the period from August 2000 to January 2002. According to Reuters, Chicago Federal Reserve President Austin Goolsby said on Friday he believes inflation is on track to reaching the U.S. Central Bank's 2% target, driven in coming months by what he expects to be a decline in housing inflation. It's working through in the way we've anticipated, Goolsby said at an economic symposium at the regional Fed Bank, adding that there is no evidence that inflation has stalled at 3%, as some analysts have worried. Progress has been helped he said, by public faith in the Fed's determination to beat inflation, which soared to 40-year highs last year. According to Reuters, World Bank President Ajay Banga said on Friday the development lender will devote 45% of its annual financing to climate-related projects by 2025, up from a target of 35%, and extend debt repayment pauses following climate disasters. Banga made the announcements at the COP28 climate conference in Dubai as the next steps in a broad overhaul of the World Bank to better respond to climate change and other global crises. According to Reuters, the risks of the Federal Reserve moving too far with interest rate hikes, and slowing the economy more than necessary, have become more balanced, with those of not moving high enough to control inflation. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said on Friday in remarks reaffirming the U.S. central bank's intent to be cautious in its upcoming monetary policy decisions.
noting that a key measure of inflation averaged 2.5% over the six months ending in October, near the Fed's 2% target. Powell said it was clear that U.S. monetary policy was slowing the economy as expected with a benchmark overnight interest rate, well into restrictive territory. According to Yahoo Finance, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell offered a new warning to investors who believe the Fed has finished raising rates and will soon pivot to cutting, saying the central bank needs to see more evidence that inflation is on its way back to the Fed's 2% target. It would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance, or to speculate on when policy might ease, Powell said Friday in prepared remarks at Spelman College in Atlanta. According to Yahoo Finance, the launch of Tesla's long-awaited Cybertruck wasn't enough to boost the shares of the electric vehicle maker on Friday. The truck's price came in significantly higher than many had expected with the lowest grade model starting at $60,990 before any electric vehicle-related tax benefits. In 2019, Tesla had said it expected to price the truck at $39,900. According to Reuters, Givenchy creative director Matthew M. Williams is leaving the LVMH-owned label after three years, the brand said on Friday, without announcing a successor. The exit is the latest in a series of designer changes at some of the industry's smaller fashion labels including Kering-owned Alexander McQueen, while the world's biggest brand, Louis Vuitton, recently extended the contract of women's wear designer Nicolas Gasquier after a decade in the job. According to Reuters, Brazil's central bank still sees its current pace of 50 basis point interest rate cuts per meeting as appropriate and expects it to remain in place for the next few meetings, multiple board members said on Friday. Remarks from Governor Roberto Campos Neto and Economic Policy Director Diogo Guillén came as the central bank's Monetary Policy Committee prepares to gather for the final time this year on December 12-13. According to Reuters, Norway's $1.5 trillion sovereign wealth fund, the world's largest, said on Friday it has been appointed by a U.S. court to co-lead an ongoing U.S. securities class action relating to the now bankrupt Silicon Valley Bank. SVB's collapse in March was the trigger for the worst banking shock since the 2008 global financial crisis, sending bank stocks globally on a wild ride. According to Yahoo Finance, the Israel-Hamas war is nowhere near settled, with fighting picking up again after a week-long ceasefire to facilitate the exchange of hostages. The shooting could continue for weeks or months. But there are a few things that haven't gone wrong since Hamas terrorists attacked Israel on October 7, and financial markets are passively showing relief by discounting risks related to the war. One of the biggest worries after October 7 was whether Iran, the Middle East's most notorious troublemaker, would overtly or covertly escalate by attacking Israel, Israel's allies or anybody else. According to Reuters, Germany's RWE has signed an agreement with the UAE's clean energy developer, known as Mazdar, to develop a 3-gigawatt wind project off the coast of Britain, capable of powering around 3 million homes, the companies said on Friday. The announcement came after British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said at the COP climate conference in Dubai earlier on Friday that the two companies had committed to invest up to £11 billion in the project. According to Bloomberg, a startup specializing in high-performance batteries is close to starting operations at a facility near Chicago's Central Business District that will help power devices such as night vision headsets and radios for the U.S. military. Nanograph received a $10 million grant from the U.S. government as part of President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act to build what the company says is the Midwest's first large-volume facility to produce silicon oxide, an important ingredient for a new kind of longer-lasting battery that can be used in electric vehicles and medical devices. It's part of a wave of investment in U.S. capacity to make more lithium-ion batteries at home as the country looks to compete with China, which controls large swaths of the world's output. According to Reuters, Eurozone bond prices rose on Friday, a day after clocking their best month in more than a year, as soft U.S. data and comments from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell supported the view that rate cuts could come as early as the first quarter next year. Powell said the risks of under- and over-tightening have become more balanced, although he reiterated that it was still too early to declare the Fed's inflation fight finished. He also said it would be premature to speculate on when policy might ease. According to Reuters, 
Retailers like Amazon.com and Foot Locker are signaling optimism for holiday season sales after stronger-than-expected figures during Black Friday and Cyber Monday, as heavy discounts lured budget-strained customers on the peak U.S. shopping days. Early estimates on holiday shopping have been encouraging to some investors after retailers sounded cautious notes in the lead-up to the season. Online sales in the U.S. during the five-day period from Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday hit a record $38 billion, according to Adobe Analytics, while the National Retail Federation said more than 200 million people shopped both in-store and online during the holiday weekend, surpassing estimates. According to Reuters, South Africa's rand strengthened against the dollar on Friday, reversing its losses from the previous day, as U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said the Fed would move, carefully, on interest rates. At 1619 GMT, the rand traded at 18.6150 against the dollar, about 1.2% stronger than its previous close. According to Reuters, MSCI's global stock index gained ground on Friday while the U.S. dollar slipped after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell vowed to move, carefully, on interest rates. Treasury yields were down in choppy trading after data showed a continued slump in manufacturing and Powell said the risks of hiking interest rates too much and slowing the economy more than necessary, have become, more balanced, with the risks of not hiking enough to control inflation. According to Reuters, the Justice Department and National Association of Realtors tangled on Friday in an appeals court over the government's decision to close, and then reopen, an antitrust investigation into the way people pay the thousands of dollars in fees when they buy or sell a home. According to Reuters, the risks of the Federal Reserve moving too far with interest rate hikes, and slowing the economy more than necessary, have become, more balanced, with those of not moving high enough to control inflation. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said on Friday in remarks reaffirming the U.S. central bank's intent to be cautious in its upcoming monetary policy decisions. Noting that a key measure of inflation averaged 2.5% over the six months ending in October, near the Fed's 2% target, Powell said it was clear that U.S. monetary policy was slowing the economy as expected with a benchmark overnight interest rate, well into restrictive territory. According to Reuters, Wall Street's main indexes inched higher on Friday after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell acknowledged progress in lowering inflation, encouraging expectations the central bank was done with its interest rate hiking campaign. Powell noted a key measure of inflation was near the Fed's 2% target and that it was clear the U.S. monetary policy was slowing the economy as expected. He, however, added the central bank was prepared to tighten policy further if necessary. According to Reuters, Governments, development banks and companies announced on Friday initiatives to mobilize billions in climate cash at the COP28 summit where the UAE has made increasing financing central to its leadership of the UN talks. So far the world has barely begun to deliver the vast amounts of money needed to help the world pay for the transition away from fossil fuels and deal with the impact of climate change. According to Bloomberg, Investors are yanking cash out of the market for inflation-protected bonds as price pressures moderate in the U.S., even as the securities rallied along with the broader market in November. A combined $400 million was pulled out of five major exchange-traded funds that target the Treasury's inflation-protected securities in November, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. That's the biggest monthly outflow from those funds since January 2022. According to Reuters, Southwest Airlines and its pilots' union are nearing a new contract which will increase pay for over 11,000 pilots and conclude months of negotiations ahead of the upcoming holiday travel season, CNBC reported on Friday. Southwest and the pilots' union did not immediately respond to Reuters' requests for comment. According to Reuters, even as traders bring forward the expected timing of the Federal Reserve's first interest rate cut, the gap since the U.S. central bank's last hike will probably be one of the longest on record. Lengthy periods of economic and policy stability are surely preferable to the Fed regularly scrambling to cut rates only a few months after they have peaked, but they can foster complacency and leverage in financial markets. According to Reuters, as the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas collapsed, some world leaders at the UN Climate Summit criticized Israel on Friday and called for the Gaza war to end while U.S. and U.K. officials held meetings on the conflict on the gathering's sidelines. 
The war's prominence in speeches at the Dubai event served to highlight international divisions over the bloodshed and presented a distraction for a summit where nations are trying to find consensus on the shared threat posed by climate change. According to Reuters, Activist hedge fund Blackwell's Capital is preparing to challenge Wendy's Co.'s board of directors in a push for improvements to the fast food chain's financial performance, people familiar with the matter said on Friday. Blackwell's, run by Jason Aintabi, plans to nominate several directors to Wendy's 12-member board, said the sources, who asked not to be identified discussing confidential deliberations. According to Reuters, Walmart said on Friday it is not advertising on social media platform X, one of the latest brands to say it has dropped the Elon Musk-owned site. We aren't advertising on X as we've found other platforms to better reach our customers, a Walmart spokesperson said. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields dropped on Friday after Fed Chair Jerome Powell sounded caution on the central bank's interest rate outlook and data showed a continued manufacturing slump. According to Reuters, Brazil on Friday unveiled a proposal at the COP28 climate summit to set up a global fund to finance forest conservation that it hopes can raise $250 billion from sovereign wealth funds and other investors, including the oil industry. The proposal, presented at a panel during the meeting in Dubai, provides for funding to 80 countries that have tropical forests to help maintain their trees, with annual payments based on the hectares conserved or restored. According to Reuters, French digital payments company Worldline is considering options including asset sales as part of efforts to reassure shareholders after a sharp drop in its share price, three people familiar with the matter said. The company lost more than half its market capitalization in late October and sent ripples across the sector after it cut its full-year financial targets, citing the economic slowdown and heightened scrutiny over money laundering risks in Germany. According to Bloomberg, the takeover of Everton FC by 777 partners is facing increasing scrutiny from Premier League officials studying the investment firm's suitability to own a major football club, according to people familiar with the situation. Decision makers in the Premier League have begun adopting a more skeptical stance in recent weeks after questions were raised about the finances of Miami based 777 partners, the people said, asking not to be identified because the information is private. According to Bloomberg, a lender run by the billionaire Rubin Brothers has filed to seize the Chatwall, a luxury hotel in midtown Manhattan, after the debt went into default. The property's mezzanine debt, which was loaned by the Rubin Brothers' Motcom Estates, is scheduled for a January 17 auction, positioning the winning bidder to take control of the 76-room hotel at 130 West 44th Street, where weekend rates often top $1,000 a night. According to Yahoo Finance, Stocks that got slammed amid fears of higher for longer interest rates caught a second wind during the roaring November market rally. The SP Regional Bank Index rose more than 16% during the month, including a more than 2% gain on Wednesday. Kathy Wood's flagship ARK Innovation ETF gained more than 34%. Meme stocks are soaring too, with the broad Roundhill Meme ETF rising more than 20% in November and meme stock favorite GameStop moving up over 20% on Wednesday alone. According to Bloomberg, new rules from the Biden administration to limit a lucrative consumer tax credit for electric vehicles that contain ingredients from China and other foreign adversaries drew the wrath of Senator Joe Manchin, who said the requirements were fraught with loopholes. The Treasury Department rules are another example of the Biden administration clearly breaking the law to try to implement a bill that it could not pass, the West Virginia senator said Friday in an emailed statement. This administration is, yet again, trying to find workarounds and delays that leave the door wide open for China to benefit off the backs of American taxpayers. According to Reuters, Chinese conglomerate ByteDance's TikTok has asked Europe's second-highest court to suspend its designation as a gatekeeper under onerous new EU tech rules until judges rule on its challenge against the label. The Digital Markets Act requires TikTok and other designated gatekeepers Alphabet's Google, Meta Platforms, Apple, Amazon and Microsoft to make their messaging apps interoperate with rivals and let users decide which apps to pre-install on their devices. According to Reuters, MSCI's global stock index gained ground on Friday, while U.S. Treasury yields and the dollar were lower after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell vowed to move, carefully, on interest rates.
Treasury yields fell after Powell said the risks of hiking interest rates too much and slowing the economy more than necessary have become more balanced, with the risks of not hiking enough to control inflation. According to Reuters, Brazilian food processor BRF plans to increase its direct purchases of grain from farmers to 40% of its total by next year, as it seeks to increase control over its production chain while trying to reach traceability goals, executives said. The pork and poultry processor, one of Brazil's largest buyers of corn and soybeans, bought 17% of the material used to make feed directly from producers last year, and 32% in 2023. According to Reuters, investors have been piling into an exchange-traded fund designed to track U.S. natural gas prices, in spite of the commodity's dismal performance in 2023. The U.S. natural gas fund's price, tied to the performance of futures contracts on the commodity, has plunged 60.7% so far this year, falling 27% in November alone. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell attempted to push back against investors' growing expectations of interest rate cuts in the first half of 2024. Wall Street responded by doubling down on Friday, despite Powell's warning that it would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance, or to speculate on when policy might ease. According to Yahoo Finance, important people love to have things named after themselves art museums, libraries, automobiles, even healthcare policies. Just don't put their name on something people dislike. President Joe Biden decided earlier this year to claim ownership of Bidenomics, the shorthand term Yahoo Finance and other news outlets use to describe Biden's economic policies. At first, he said of Bidenomics, I don't know what the hell it is. But then, in June, Biden said, it's fine, because it is my policy. For the next several months, Biden declared over and over in speeches on the economy, Bidenomics is working. According to Reuters, a German court has called upon the lawyer of former Wirecard board member January Marsilek, who has been on the run since the implosion of the German payments company, to testify next Wednesday in Germany's biggest post-war fraud trial. Wirecard became the first ever DAX member to file for insolvency in 2020, owing creditors almost $4 billion, after disclosing a 1.9 billion euro hole in its accounts. According to Bloomberg, Ireland's Pascal Donahoe, whose leadership of Euro Area Finance Ministers has elevated his global profile, is considering a bid to lead the International Monetary Fund, according to people familiar with the matter. Donahoe, 49, is currently Ireland's Minister for Public Expenditure and served as Finance Minister from 2017 to 2022. He has led the Eurogroup, the body of finance chiefs that steered the bloc through its sovereign debt crisis and the pandemic, since mid-2020, having been elected late last year for a second two-and-a-half-year term. According to Reuters, investors seeking justification for breathtaking rallies in stocks and bonds are finding hope in the words of Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, even as the central bank insists the fight against inflation has a long way to go. Signs of easing inflation have ignited bets that the Fed will begin loosening its restrictive monetary policy earlier than expected, driving the SP500 to its biggest monthly gain for more than a year in November. Yields on the U.S. benchmark 10-year Treasury, which move inversely to prices, saw their steepest decline in more than a decade. According to Reuters, the White House said on Friday it was prepared to pause sanctions relief for OPEC member Venezuela in coming days unless there is further progress on the release of Venezuelan political prisoners and wrongfully detained Americans. Speaking after a deadline for Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to meet certain commitments, White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby said the U.S. welcomed an announcement on Thursday that opposition presidential candidates barred from public office would be able to appeal to Venezuela's highest court. According to Bloomberg, Mexican industrial real estate trust Fibra Next is unlikely to carry out its highly anticipated initial public offering until early next year, according to people familiar with the process. The trust, which this week delayed its plans to go public in Mexico, still lacks needed paperwork from the tax authority and stocks regulator, said the people, who asked for anonymity as the timing has not been made public. According to Bloomberg, OpenAI is sticking with a plan to let employees sell shares in the company through what's known as a tender offer, and its giving would be participants an extra month to decide whether to take part, according to several people with knowledge of the matter.
OpenAI had been in talks to sell shares in a deal that would value the artificial intelligence pioneer at $86 billion, people with knowledge of the matter told Bloomberg in October. But concerns it might not proceed as planned emerged earlier this month amid the turmoil that led to the firing, then quick rehiring, of Chief Executive Officer Sam Altman. According to Bloomberg, one of the big winners from the sudden furious rally in the U.S. bond market, Bill Gross. The former top guy at the world's biggest bond fund may just be a marginal player with an up-and-down track record nowadays, but he nailed a rates bet made in late October. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks rallied and the SP registered its highest close of the year on Friday, starting December on an upbeat note as remarks from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell bolstered the view that key policy rates have peaked. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration said on Friday that Becton Dickinson is recalling its Alaris infusion pumps due to compatibility issues with Cardinal Health's Monoject syringes. The health regulator said that the Alaris pumps are validated for use with Monoject syringes. However, the dimensions for Monoject syringes have recently changed while rebranding the syringes from Covidian Monoject to Cardinal Health Monoject. According to Bloomberg, the New Jersey Attorney General's office is reviewing the conduct of two law enforcement officials as part of a probe sparked by the federal bribery case against U.S. Senator Robert Menendez. Gerbeer Grewal, the enforcement chief at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, and Andrew Bruck, a top official at the Department of Justice, are both under scrutiny in what the state attorney general described as an internal inquiry, according to people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, the benchmark SP500 index closed at its highest level of the year on Friday amid growing optimism the Federal Reserve was done raising U.S. interest rates and could begin to cut them next year as inflation cools. The index closed at 4,594.63 points, up 26.83 points, or 0.59%, and topping the close on July 31 at 4,588.96, which had been the prior high of 2023. According to Reuters, a searing late-year rally has brought the SP500 to a fresh 2023 closing high, as investors bet the Federal Reserve is done raising interest rates and the U.S. economy will remain resilient in the face of tighter monetary policy. The benchmark index closed at 4,594.63, nearly six points above its previous closing high for 2023 set in late July. The index gained 0.6% on Friday after bullish investors grew more confident the rate cycle had peaked following comments from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. According to Bloomberg, for all the bullish milestones notched by November's big market surge, recent history offers Wall Street a lesson in caution. Time and time again, speculation breaks out that the Federal Reserve is poised to ease monetary policy soon enough spurring even cautious investors to erupt in a spasm of cross-asset buying. Stocks jump, bond yields fall, and a dash ensues among equity speculators into shady corners encompassing everything from meme flyers to crypto and profitless tech. According to Reuters, the U.S. Air Force has eliminated Boeing from its competition to develop a successor to the E-4B Nightwatch, Boeing confirmed on Friday, shaking up the battle to build the next version of the aircraft known as the Doomsday Plane due to its ability to survive a nuclear war. The move leaves privately held defense contractor Sierra Nevada Corp. as the lone company publicly vying for the survivable Airborne Operations Center contract to eventually replace a fleet that has been in use since the 1970s. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc. has signed a contract with rival SpaceX for three launches of Elon Musk's Falcon 9 rocket, grabbing additional capacity to loft the company's internet from space satellites into orbit. The deal, which Amazon announced on its website Friday, means the e-commerce and cloud computing giant will be relying in part on its main rival to get its own satellite constellation into orbit. The Falcon 9 launches are set to begin in mid-2025. According to Bloomberg, Reverence Capital Partners, the financial services-focused private equity group, is seeking buyers for a minority stake in Osaic, the network of wealth management firms formerly known as Advisor Group, people familiar with the matter said. Reverence is seeking to sell up to 20% of Osaic, a stake that could be worth as much as $2.5 billion, according to the people, who asked not to be identified discussing confidential information.
deliberations are ongoing and reverence may yet opt to sell a larger holding, one of the people said. According to Bloomberg, OpenAI is delaying the launch of an online store for people to interact with an array of chatbots customized by its users, citing the interruption caused by the ousting and reinstatement of Chief Executive Officer Sam Altman. OpenAI shared the news in an email Thursday to people who have been building GPTs, its term for the customizable versions of its popular chat GPT chatbot. The company said it plans to roll out its GPT store in early 2024, rather than in late 2023 as it had initially planned. According to Bloomberg, Fitch Ratings upgraded Greece to investment grade, opening the door of a multi-trillion dollar investment pool to the nation's bonds. The firm granted Greece a BBB rating with a stable outlook on Friday, echoing SP Global Ratings's decision to upgrade the nation in late October after 13 years with a junk rating. According to Reuters, renewed fighting in Gaza stretched into a second day on Saturday after talks to extend a week-old truce with Hamas collapsed and mediators said Israeli bombardments were complicating attempts to again pause hostilities. Eastern areas of Khan Yunus in southern Gaza came under intense bombardment as the truce deadline lapsed shortly after dawn on Friday, with columns of smoke rising into the sky, Reuters journalists in the city said. According to Reuters, exchange-traded funds had a bumper month in the United States in November, with assets climbing to a record $7.65 trillion, State Street Global Advisors said on Friday. ETF investors aggressively bought risk on assets in November as the switch flipped, said Matthew Bartolini, head of SPDR America's research at State Street, citing lower interest rates and renewed confidence in the economic outlook. According to Reuters, oil and gas pipeline firm Equitrans Midstream was in the early stages of considering a sale, Bloomberg News reported on Friday, citing people familiar with the matter. While there is no certainty the company would decide to proceed with the sale, it would likely attract interest should it launch a sale process in early 2024, the report said. According to Reuters, co-writing, directing, producing and starring in his Leonard Bernstein biopic, Maestro, was a terrifying undertaking for Bradley Cooper that turned into a journey of joy and courage. A passion project years in the making, Maestro, is the follow-up to Cooper's directorial debut, A Star is Born. According to Reuters, Eli Lilly said on Friday the U.S. Food and Drug Administration gave a second approval for its drug Japerka, which is used to treat a form of blood cancer. The company said the health regulator gave the new approval to the drug for the treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, a type of cancer in which the bone marrow makes too many of certain white blood cells. According to Reuters, credit ratings agency Scope on Friday maintained its stance on Italy citing the country's relevance in European blocs and regional policy which would likely get the Eurozone's third-largest economy support from institutions if in distress. Weak economic growth and high interest on the country's huge debt are the main problems. According to Reuters, as U.S. stocks sit on hefty gains at the close of a rollercoaster year, investors are eyeing factors that could sway equities in the remaining weeks of 2023, including tax loss selling and the so-called Santa Claus rally. The key catalyst for stocks will likely continue to be the expected trajectory of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. Evidence of cooling economic growth has fueled bets that the U.S. central bank could begin cutting rates as early as the first half of 2024, sparking a rally that has boosted the SP 519.6% year-to-date and taken the index to a fresh closing high for the year on Friday. According to Reuters, the U.S., EU and UK are pressuring Liberia, the Marshall Islands and Panama to increase oversight of ships carrying their flags to ensure they do not transport Russian oil sold above the price cap, a source who has seen the communications to the countries said on Friday. The move marks another escalation in the West's efforts to enforce the $60 price cap on seaborne shipments of Russian oil it imposed to punish Moscow for its war in Ukraine. According to Reuters, Former Wells Fargo Company CEO Tim Sloan filed a lawsuit on Friday accusing the bank of failing to pay him more than $34 million after he resigned in 2019 amid a wide-ranging sales practices scandal. Sloan in the lawsuit filed in California state court says Wells Fargo cancelled stock awards and withheld a bonus he had earned before stepping down. According to Bloomberg, 
Lawrence Summers, a new board member at artificial intelligence startup OpenAI, said that the startup's work was extraordinarily important and that the company needed to operate as a corporation with a conscience. OpenAI has to be prepared to cooperate with key government officials on regulatory issues, on national security issues, on development of technology issues, Summers said on Bloomberg Television's Wall Street Week with David Weston on Friday. According to Bloomberg, even before the U.S. government demanded that Binance Holdings Limited pay $4.3 billion in fines and accused its founder Chongpeng, CZ, Zhao of various crimes, the crypto exchange had been facing significant regulatory challenges globally. Australia cancelled Binance's license for a derivatives operation and searched several of the company's locations there. Singapore ordered the firm to stop doing business in the city-state. Hong Kong warned more than two years ago that Binance was an unregulated platform. Even Dubai, where CZ primarily resides, has yet to grant the exchange full authorization. According to Bloomberg, Uber Technologies Inc. has been added to the SP500 index, after reporting two straight quarters of operating profits that have fueled a big rally in the ride-sharing company this year. Jabel Inc. and Builders First Source Inc. are set to join too. San Francisco-based Uber and the latter two companies will replace Sealed Air Corp., Alaska Air Group Inc. and Solar Edge Technologies Inc. in the SP500, respectively. The new additions will join the index prior to the market opening on December 18, SP Dow Jones Indices said in a press release late Friday. According to Reuters, the chief executive of Canadian miner First Quantum said he would have to look into how the company could sustain its finances in the long term, given Panama's push to annul operations at its local copper mine, the miner's biggest revenue source. We have strong finances in the short and medium term, but yes, we have to see how we sustain them in the long term, Tristan Pascal said in an interview with Panamanian newspaper La Prensa published on Friday, when asked about the risk of bankruptcy for the company if Panama operations end. According to Reuters, a U.S. judge on Friday said Donald Trump does not have immunity from criminal charges for actions he took as president, rejecting a bid by the Republican to toss out the case accusing him of conspiring to overturn his 2020 election loss. U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin in Washington found there was no legal basis for concluding that U.S. presidents cannot face criminal charges once they are no longer in office. According to Reuters, Ukraine has become progressively stronger over the past year and will soon be able to reopen Kyiv's international airport, President Volodymyr Zelensky's chief of staff said on Friday. Andriy Yermak made the pledge while addressing diplomats at Borispol International Airport outside the capital. According to Reuters, North Korea said on Saturday it would consider any interference with its satellite operations a declaration of war and would mobilize its war deterrence if any attack against its strategic assets were imminent. Pyongyang would respond to any U.S. interference in space by eliminating the viability of U.S. spy satellites, state media KCNA reported, citing a statement from North Korea's defense ministry spokesperson. According to Reuters, while the world's climate diplomats huddle over draft decisions to be made at the end of this year's UN Climate Summit, governments at COP28 are firing off a flurry of new promises for action. Among the expected pledges at COP28 are a goal to triple renewable energy capacity and initiatives on methane and coal power. These voluntary side deals have proliferated in recent years, even as global temperatures and greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise. According to Reuters, a key offshore creditor group of China Evergrande Group supports keeping the developer operating. The South China Morning Post reported ahead of a court hearing on Monday that could decide to liquidate the indebted firm. The group, which owns about $2 billion in offshore notes guaranteed by Evergrande, issued a statement late on Friday urging that Hangda Real Estate, Evergrande's flagship onshore unit, be allowed to maintain operations to ensure completion of homes and delivery of homes, the newspaper said. According to Reuters, governments and investors are pouring billions of dollars into emerging technologies to combat global warming in long-shot bets that entrepreneurship can help lead the way to a climate-friendly world. As officials from nearly 200 countries seek to forge agreements at the UNCOP28 climate summit in Dubai this month, they will also be considering deployment of the nascent technologies. According to Reuters, 
Toyota Motor has halted production on some aging lines at joint venture in China while operations continue as normal, the Japanese automaker said on Saturday after a media report that it was partially suspending production due to weak sales. The production halt at the Tianjin venture with China's FAO was a planned move, and Toyota is adjusting production on a daily basis based on changes in vehicle composition, a spokesperson said by email.